Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Olson. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm building an industrial black iron pipe lamp featuring a wine bottle. And on that note, let's get started. First, I'm cutting a piece of wood for the base of the lamp. I salvaged this board from a stack of milled lumber that had unfortunately been forgotten about. This piece is rough cut, so I'm sanding it smooth, but not to perfection. I want it to have a little bit of character, too. I made several passes with the saw, routing a channel for the lamp port. A router or a milling machine would work just as well, but the saw was already out, so I decided to use that instead. It worked pretty well. I'm applying varnish using a brush here. I ended up varnishing this piece of wood twice. The second time, after sanding it down, I used an old t-shirt to spread the varnish instead, which I recommend over using a brush. For varnishing, be sure to use a lint-free t-shirt or cloth. Next, I'm cleaning the black iron pipe fittings with some soap and water and an old toothbrush. For those of you who don't know, black iron pipe is covered with a protective oil to keep it from rusting. I'm going to paint the lamp later on, and the paint won't stick to the oil. Here I'm marking out and pre-drilling holes for the screws that will hold the lamp to its base. Pre-drilling prevents the wood from cracking caused by expansion from the screws when they are drilled into the wood. The screws are one inch long, so I've marked the drill bit with tape. I don't want to end up drilling through the base and then into my desk. I'm using this brass switch, but I'm disguising it behind a water faucet handle. First, I'm going to epoxy the switch inside the one inch T fitting. Basically, the idea is to put a heavy dollop or a large puddle in the bottom of the T and set the switch in the puddle. When the epoxy dries it'll keep the switch from moving around when I turn the lamp on and off. I've got this 18 2 gauge cloth covered lamp cord. It'll give the lamp a retro look. The cord is made up of two wires, one black and one white. After removing the fabric, I cut the black wire in half. Unfurl the two ends. Then I slip a piece of heat shrink over each end of the wire. Be sure to put the heat shrink on before you solder anything together. Twist the ends of one of the black wires together with one of the wires from the switch. Be sure to add flux to both before you do this. Once the wires are secured, solder both sets of wires. Here is side one after soldering, and here is side two being soldered. After soldering, slide the heat shrink over the solder joints, I'm using a lighter, but a heat gun will work too. I don't want to burn the heat shrink, just shrink it. This is a half inch gate valve. I'm removing the valve from the T-fitting. The T-fitting itself is not needed for this project. Now I'm removing the gate from the valve stem. That is not needed either. I'm putting epoxy on the valve stem to secure a piece of clear vinyl tubing, which you'll see in a moment. The opposite end of the tubing will pressure fit over the, the brass switch, which is inside the T, of course. This process took me a few tries, but once I got the vinyl tubing cut just to the right length, it worked out just fine. Finally, I start assembling the pipe fittings. You may notice that I've threaded the lamp cord through pieces of clear vinyl tubing. 
This is to protect it from being damaged by the threads and other sharp edges inside the pipe fittings themselves, mainly whenever there is a 90 degree turn. The assembly of all the pipe fittings doesn't take all that long. I didn't use any Loctite, epoxy, or glue of any kind to keep everything together. I wrenched everything down real tight with pipe wrenches, so there is no way any of these fittings will loosen up and come apart on their own. Now I'm attaching the lamp to its base so it can stand on its own. Now it's time for my favorite part of the build, splitting the wine bottle. I scored the glass with a glass cutter first. Unfortunately, that footage was lost. This causes a weak point in the glass. I heated the scored part of the bottle in hot water for about 30 seconds. The video has been edited down to save time. Then I quenched it in cold water for only a few seconds. The expansion and contraction caused by the hot and cold will cause the glass to separate where the glass has been scored. This whole process took less than three minutes. This process, although it only took a few minutes, it does take a little patience, but believe me, you'll get rewarded if you do it just right. And voila! perfectly straight cut. Just be careful, those edges are going to be very sharp. I cleaned the sediment from the wine out of the bottle later on. I'm using a diamond hone to take the sharp edges off of the bottle, which worked very well. It only took a couple of minutes to remove the dangerous edges and to make the bottle safe to handle. This is a compression fitting meant to be used with electrical conduit. This piece I'm unscrewing isn't necessary. The other three pieces I'm keeping. Now this piece here compresses, hence the name compression fitting. However, it will not compress enough to hold the neck of a wine bottle. I'm using a strip of this 1 16th of an inch rubber to create a homemade gasket of sorts. When the compression fitting is threaded back together, the rubber will help the fitting hold the bottle without using any annoyingly sticky substance such as glue or epoxy. Just be sure to tighten the compression fitting back together tightly Otherwise, there is a chance the bottle will slip out over time. I'm wiring up the light socket using the excess cord. This is very simple. The white wire goes to the silver screw and the black wire goes to the gold screw. Here you can see I've added a nut to the threaded rod that the light socket is being held by. Once inserted into the neck of the bottle, I'm adding a washer and then another nut on top. This will provide a method of raising and lowering or adjusting where the light socket sits within the bottle and then keeping everything from falling through the bottle when I'm done. And here I am soldering everything together. I'm attaching everything this way because of the bottle. There is no space in the bottle to wire up the light socket and I don't want extra cord dangling out of it. And pulling the cord up through the lamp itself is problematic though not impossible. 
At any rate, this is the easiest way to finish the assembly. And of course, I have to wire the plug as well. Follow the same step as wiring the light socket. The white wire goes to the silver screw, this one's marked, and the black wire goes to the gold screw. As you can see, the lamp works, and that's exactly what I was hoping for. However, there is a slight problem. You'll notice that the lamp is not symmetrical, which I don't really care about because I think it looks cool anyways. But the bottle hangs directly over this T, which means there's really no room to get the light bulb into where the socket is up here. So in order to fix that, I have to take this nipple out, put a longer one in, which will move the bottle over farther, consequently making the, the, uh, the whole lamp more symmetrical and giving me better access to the light bulb. Now I got the light bulb in because I, I removed this piece here. That's really the only way to do it, otherwise there's no room to, to get the bulb in. But that's okay. Uh, it looks cool, it works, and that's exactly what I wanted, so uh, I will probably do a, a short follow-up video of the semi-disassembly and the replacement of this piece. Also, the lamp hasn't been painted. That was supposed to be the last step in the build. But I used pipe wrenches to put it together, and if I'm going to take it apart, I'll need the same pipe wrenches. Everything is wrenched together really tight. So the pipe wrenches will ruin the paint, and I don't want to repaint it twice. So, that's... That sums up the issues. Not everything goes quite according to plan, but it's okay. I'm happy with it as it is, and um, it'll get fixed. You might have also noticed that in the video there's a slight continuity problem with the bottle. This is not the bottle I started with. That one I scored once with a diamond file used for sharpening tools. It's a very sharp file, but it didn't work, so I used a glass cutter a few days later. I scored the bottle in two different places, and that ruined the uh, integrity of the bottle. It cracked vertically instead of horizontally, and therefore I had to toss the bottle. So this one has character, this one's enough for my purposes, and I like that cool glow behind the label. I think that's uh, one of the best features of the lamp. I gotta thank JC for those bottles. Thank you, JC, for the contribution to the lamp. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed seeing the, uh, as of right now, final product, soon to be updated. I thank, uh, I want to thank everybody who was at dinner that night, the night that I got the bottles. Thanks for the encouragement and the great conversation that night. I also gotta thank my friend, uh, Claude Duvier. Claude is an old friend of mine. He helped me out with the gasket idea for the uh, compression fitting and he also helped me out with some of the camera work as well so thank you Claude I gotta thank all of you folks for watching please like the video if you found it to be helpful enjoyable uh, please let me know down in the comments if you want to see more lamp builds like this this particular design is a it's a, a variant, if you will, of a design I've seen in several places on the internet. I have a few more original ideas than this. If you're interested, uh, just let me know in the comments and um, I will ponder on those for a later date. So once again, thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more videos coming up in the near future. And I look forward to seeing you all next time.